What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up and Chat. My name is BJ Matthews, aka B Jizzle. Before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Like, share, subscribe for all of our YouTube videos. Hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button on our YouTube page. Get all updated content. Let's get it popping. Trade alert, trade alert, trade alert. First big trade of the NBA season right before the trade deadline, which hits next Thursday, you know what I'm saying? After the trade deadline, no, no more teams can make any more moves. Um, there's been reports all through the NBA going on so far, but we had the first official trade that just dropped about an hour ago, a little over an hour ago, between the Portland Trailblazers and the Los Angeles Clippers. So the Los Angeles Clippers received Eric, oh, I'm sorry, they traded away Eric Bledsoe, um, Keon Johnson, Justice Winslow in a second round draft pick for Portland Trailblazers, Norman Powell, and Robert Covington. Now, I'm going to dissect this, but let give me one second. I'm going to dissect this for y'all. So, my opinion, Clippers, of course, won this trade. Um, but I feel like the Blazers did get what they want, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. There are certain needs that are met for different teams. Some teams are looking to win a championship. Some teams are looking to just rebuild. Some teams are looking to bring in more money at hence of not winning the championship. So they might just try to be a team that's popular. They know they're not going to win, but they, as long as they want to, you know, increase revenue sales, you got to understand there's only about five to six teams that are really focused on winning the championship teams. The other teams are focused on money and marketing. So they're, they're not going to – basketball's a business. NBA's a business, so it's about making the dollar first. But for the championship teams, of course, it's about winning and making the dollar. So – Portland is one of those teams that right now they're not looking to compete for a championship in the 10th spot in the Western Conference. They're probably not going to make the playoffs. Um, they're looking to move their their other star to C.J. McCullum probably to another team, as well as Damian Lillard's a little bit uncertainty about his future with this team. Um, he's 31 years old. He's looking to win a championship. And I just think the Portland Trailblazers for the last eight seasons have not been able to crack that code uh, with that backcourt of Damian Lillard and C.J. McCullum. So I think they're going to try to break that up and just start with Anthony Simons um, as the person they're going to roll with in the future. So with that being said, I think in the hence of the, the few days, I feel like CJ McCollum is probably going to be moved most likely. And don't be surprised if either Damian Lillard chooses not to play this season or if he gets moved as well. Or if it's not this year, then next year he'll probably get moved because he needs to win a championship or at least compete for one. But um, I think the Blazers have to make that move to get Norman Powell off their books because of the contract he was getting. They had to pay Anthony Simons to give him the large deal over this summer. So I feel like they got what they want for the future. Now the Clippers, of course, they won for pretty much straight up reasons. They got better. You gave up Eric Bledsoe, which is a nice, it's okay piece, but he, you know, he does have, he's undersized. He's a smaller point guard. Um, he kind of has a little bit of a cloudy pass when, you know, him in the playoffs. So, the Clippers right now need a person that is playoff-oriented and playoff experience. So when they picked up this Norman Powell dude, first let me talk about Robert Covington and give respect to Covington. Covington's six, six foot seven uh, wingman. Um, I think he's averaging between seven and ten points a game right now with the Clippers or with the uh, Blazers last uh, this upcoming season, this past season. Um, so he has length and versatility, which the Clippers like to play. Uh, what I noticed, they like to have a lot of lengthy defenders such as Marcus Morris. Uh, Amir Coffey, Luke Kennard, Serge Ibaka, Isaiah Hardstock, of course, Kawhi and PG when they get back. But they like to have a lot of lengthy wings and fours to, to play defense. And like they even got, you know, now they got Norman Powell, so he can play defense and defend. And, of course, Covington. Now, Norman Powell, here's the thing about him. He's a 15 or 20 point per game scorer. He can light it up. He's strong. He's athletic. And he plays defense. Um, great piece for the Clippers to pick up. They got younger, they got more athletic, and it's the biggest point. The biggest point I want to make. I feel like this was a strategic move by the Lakers front office because I think it's going to propel Kawhi to come back. Because you guys have to remember, Norman Powell was with Kawhi and Serge Ibaka for that 2019 Toronto Championship championship run. Now, we know that Serge Ibaka came to the Clippers because of Kawhi Leonard. Um, Norman Powell, I feel like it's the same thing because there's been a lot of speculation with Ty Lu talking about, you know, last night that, you know, they're probably not going to have Kawhi back this season. 
But I feel like people took that out of context about what he meant. And Adrian Wojnarowski, who reported this um, deal, made that very clear. He didn't say that Kawhi Leonard wasn't coming back definitely as if he got the update just recently. What he's saying is that he understands from the jump that this team was probably not going to have Kawhi Leonard this season. It was a chance that he might not be here. So he already had his mind made up at the end of the season. He's going into, he's going to the season not, just thinking that they're not going to get Kawhi back. It doesn't mean that he was told something from the higher-ups that Kawhi is not coming back. I've been consistent. Like I said in my last video, I'm going to continue to be consistent. I believe Kawhi Leonard is coming back this season. Why? Because the number of factors from the timeline from the uh, time it started to now, um, Kawhi Leonard at the media day, the first day of, of, of basketball season with the media day, he made it clear in his media day press conference that he wanted to come back. No, actually rewind that. When he got hurt last year with the partial torn ACL, he said that he didn't even feel like he was hurt. But of course, with an ACL, you have to have cleanup surgery to make yourself 100% because you don't want to play with that ACL. So he got the surgery. He comes back for the media day this uh, upcoming season, and he actually tells the media he's ready to play. That's why he signed the four-year deal. If he wanted to, you know, think about not playing, he would just do it, just the one-on-one. -one. So his mind was already made up he wanted to play. That's the biggest thing. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. The second thing, also, this team with the Clippers have been showing him that they can compete for a title if he comes back because Kawhi is not a stupid person. He's not going to put himself in a situation that he is not going to be successful in. If he feels this team is very, very uh, competitive to get to the finals and win the championship, that's going to spark his interest to come back. And it's going to make him really reevaluate his decision making. Like, we can win this Western Conference. Now, if the Clippers were like in the 10th, the 12th spot, you know, with teams like New Orleans, San Antonio, Houston, uh, Portland, um, any of those, you know, teams down there, he would probably say to himself, you know, it's probably not worth it me coming back. I'm just going to wait till next year, get my knee rehab, and we're just going to shut it down. But they're in the eighth spot right now. They're in the playoff race right now. And you bring in this Norman Powell dude who played with Kawhi, who played with Serge Ibaka that helped him win the championship. You don't think Kawhi Leonard's sitting back saying, man, this team is doing everything they can to to try to secure a championship. They really want to win. And then you got Ty Lue, who in my opinion is the coach of the year, doing this with a shorthanded roster, man. Take it from a basketball player like me. When you see like your teammates going hard and you hurt, if you're the star player, and they see that you buying in and you you are busting your ass, that's going to that's going to motivate you to want to come back to lead your troops. And from what I see with Kawhi Leonard, he has a very close relationship with this team. I feel like Kawhi Leonard really, really does care about this team. People are trying to compare this to the San Antonio situation where he didn't come back. That's a totally different situation. He was already checked out at San Antonio. He didn't want to be there no more. But then you take him to Toronto, they win a championship. And then with the Clippers, they would have won the championship had he been there. But I think he has a, he has a strong connection with this team. So when you have a strong connection with your brothers, you want to be there for them if you can. He made it clear he wanted to come back at the beginning of the year. They've been having reports all this season about him looking great, ahead of schedule, working out. He's I feel like he's ready right now to come back. But they're going to keep, continue to be cautious about it. I think he's going to be coming back probably either the end of February or early March. And um, only time will tell, but that's my hypothesis. I also think that Paul George will be back as well with the rest that he's been getting. Uh, he's going to come back this season, and then once they get the full strength, bro, I'm telling you, this team can be anybody in the West, and I feel like they will be the best team in the West. I've been consistent with that. I'll be continue to be consistent with that. But y'all let me know what y'all think. You guys think the Clippers got better? Um, how do you feel about the trade between the Clippers and the Blazers? Do you think that the Clippers full strength can be the best team in the West? Let me know what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to all of our YouTube channel, um, all of our social media, Twitter, TikTok. Instagram, Facebook, you know what I'm saying? The Pull Up Basketball Podcast and that notification on the screen. You know, all of the content, pull up, see, pull up a jet, pull up. Peace. Out of here, like, swim well.